Yeah, welcome to the Trident. Yo, thrower. yo, 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 it's your boy Glenn Lawrence. Hey, this is fantastic. We love the Trident. Well, there's only two of us, so what is that? No, this is like a what are we? Oh, yeah, we're a Biden. No, a Biden. no, 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 we're not a Biden. We're not, uh, Biden. Biden. We're not Biden yeah. or Biden or by anything. <laughs> no, no, we do the biting. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> we do the biting. We well, are a man then, down today, man. Let's huh? look at this. We're a man like, down. Ah, man down. I don't like man down. Yeah, I mean, three-legged stools need that third leg. Exactly. And like me, when I'm standing, I got three legs. Exactly. Like exactly. You know, and you know who loves those all three legs? You know who loves, especially the third leg? Uh huh. Them hoes love that third leg. Oh, three oh fours. What are we talking about today, Glenn? Oh man, we are talking this about my why. Topic. This is is your topic. This is your topic. This is why alphas love them 304s guys we love 304s we have nothing but praise and adornment and just add we just love the 304s they make the world go around and we're gonna chop it up a little bit about why we like 304s and 304s play a key role in history if you think about it historically from a historic sense 304s have been around since the dawn of time they play their part in our social societies. They do, and, and it's biblical. They are mentioned it in is the Bible. Biblical. It is they biblical. keep everybody straight and on the narrow. Well, maybe not so much narrow. Well, maybe not so wide. much they narrow, but wide, I mean, you right? know. They, they, they keep they, us they keep on you... the wide and loose path. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? They also keep you guys on your P's and Q's and also keep women, yes, other women in check. Oh, that's interesting. You know, for us to sit here and sing the praises of the 304s and the wonderful modern woman who has fully embraced her sluthood with open arms and has publicly proclaimed that it's open season for poon gathering. Uh, and it's just a wonderful thing. Hoop earrings for everybody. Six inches, right? Yeah, you know what it is? It's literally like, you know, they, at the poon store, like it, it went, they marked down the prices. Oh, I mean, now, now yeah. everybody could afford some poom because the, the 304s mm -hmm. are now everyone. Every modern woman is a potential 304. And, and for certain guys, we get that lifetime coupon code. You got that, we'll that, that, that VIP membership. Out. That's that we don't VIP have to membership. Check out. No, no, but, you know, <laughs> we don't even wait in line. We go right through. We cut in line. And, and sometimes we don't even have to use our coupon code. It's just right, right there. Right. I love it. We just love them. Uh, and, uh, it, and unfortunately, a large majority of men, they say they don't like them. And they just want us to bash them. Uh, you know, how would it it's be sad. if we put a bunch it's of 304s around a table and we just, and we just bash them with the truth? You That'd mean, be amazing. It's a, kind you of know? like a show. Yeah, it could be a real a, show. No, nah. I swear that's already a show. Nobody I mean, like that. Everybody likes 304s. Exactly. On, Why would man? they want to do something like so mean to the 304s? I know it. They just, uh, you know, they give us a nice uh, outlet for uh, our stresses. Exactly. Right? You know, as long as we are careful and we don't do stupid things like certain athletes do. And, uh, oh, are you talking about like honey Colin trap? Kaepernick? Colin, oh, Colin Honey Trap. Kaepernick? Yeah. Colin Kaepernick, one of one of one of. Or the, how about P.J. Washington? Oh, what about him? Did you he know get what? honey trapped? They got honey trapped by the same three hundred four. Oh my goodness! That's and now that that's same three hundred four is teaching courses to athletes on how not to get trapped by. Oh, say it's not so. She's charging money. She is getting paid to teach guys to how to avoid the hose. How to avoid the 304 honey trap. Now, that's really interesting. It's almost like an informant. Like, you know, when you're a drug dealer, right? And you get busted and then you work for the cops and, you know, you end up teaching the cops how to catch the criminals. It's yeah. like now you're an informant and like a, a um, uh, 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 what is it? Um, someone that they go to like for, yeah. for like, um, like a special investigator or a, a yeah. somebody that has a specialty in this business. Like she is a specialty hoe. Yeah, like she's on the inside under covers. Yeah. Like under like, covers, literally. She's and literally under the covers. Deep, <laughs> deep cover. And then, you know, she turns tail and has to go into witness protection. Well, she turns tail a lot 
I know that's what I was talking about. That's something to see. I would imagine we love that. And we have nothing but admiration. Of course. Now, once that's who are we done, talking about, who are we talking now, about? Once that's done. You, I could see a movie about it. You know, maybe she comes Ooh. out from protection, you know, witness protection. Ooh. And maybe there's a movie. Wasn't there a movie that they made about somebody in the mob? It was, was it good fellows or no, 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 no. No, oh, there were some movies like that, right? There's there've been plenty of movies that had to do with yeah. like witness protection. Like Henry Hill, what was that one? Uh, Henry um, Hill, the famous mobster. Yeah, you know? I'm trying to remember. Um, no, or maybe it wasn't Goodfellas. Maybe maybe the one she could make would be you know, you know, it would it would it, it, be called you know girls. her movie. Her movie would be called The Undercover Lover. The Undercover Lover. Oh, okay, okay. Wouldn't be. Know. Wouldn't it be like Goodfellas, like good girls or something like that? It would be called Bad Good Girls Hose. Gone Bad. Oh, Bad Hoes. Bad Hoes Gone Good. Oh, oh. Uh, the uh, redemption of a good girl. <laughs> mm, that, the the yeah. road to hoe. <laughs> oh, oh, a hard, ro a stiff uh, road to hoe. A stiff road to hoe. Where is, where is Phil Foster at when we need him? A <laughs> That's stiff his, road his to line. hoe. All about, all about proper use of garden tools. <laughs> <laughs> proper care <laughs> guys well you know yeah we're talking about like britney renner you know um renner. everybody talks trash about britney renner every every guy smack like just trashes her but you know what i guarantee i guarantee that if britney renner offered her sex her ass to any guy that trashes her they would jump on it in a heartbeat she is she kind of cute. I mean, she's got dude, she has some value, which we know, you know, once a hey. I was quite fertile, that the value is intrinsic at that point. Yeah, I mean, no, she is she is very attractive, you know, for um, you know, for for she's above definitely above average, and a lot of guys, I mean, obviously, if you're pulling if you are pulling professional athletes and getting them to put a baby in you, you're not ugly. You know, you're definitely mm -hmm. not ugly. Like, you know, I'm going to pull up a picture of her. How yeah, about that? that? Yeah, you know, that's definitely uh, love the 304s. But guys, there is a certain amount of risk when you're out hunting. You know, you could fall into a canyon. You can drown, you know. So when you guys are out in your hunting parties, you have to understand the risk. And we're going to show you a risk right now. Uh, you can love the hunt, but um, there's definitely a risk. Uh, oh, yeah. You are man enough to lead the hunt. Ah, the rewards are great, aren't they, my friend? And, and knowing and knowing the what the hunt means, like yeah, you know, understanding what the hunt is and like how to approach it is very important. So there's Brittany. Ah, oh, that's Brittany. Yeah, you do zoom in on that. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, I'm one second. Really up. Let me get. Let me zoom in on her. Let's see. Hard for me to see. Yeah, it's kind oh, of. Dark. It's kind of far. Hold on, yeah. Hold on. There we go. No? Right. I mean, I can surmise that there's a female figure. Oh, know? yeah. I mean, like, there's that one. Um, you know. No, I know that it's hard for men and women to be friends as is defined in our space. But she could be a, somewhat of a, from uh, you know, a friendly female acquaintance, I would imagine. Yeah. Which oh, yeah. I like to use the term friendly female acquaintance. In fact... You know, you could have friendly activities with her, and you should have friendly female. Uh, you, you know, know what activities she, with with your three hundred fours. There's no reason you couldn't be nice to them, and you know, even potentially allow them to be in your presence and and absorb some of you your attention by proxy. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You know what she? I mean, she gets a lot of attention. She's obviously a very attractive girl. You know, um, every every guy prefer loves light-skinned black girls i mean i don't know many people she's that black? yeah she's mixed she's yeah. half black and half white um so i mean i trust me i mean she gets she, okay. she so is she one get attention she, for an exotic yeah. look because novelty is always preferred but yep. you know the thing with the the 304s is i think they all try to project some kind of exotic look in an exaggerated fashion i noticed the lips mm -hmm. overdone there's a lot of a lot of signaling that goes on there you know in certain species of primates, things go on at certain times of the month where colorations happen, such as around yeah. genital areas. It's quite bright. And it almost has the appearance of swollen lips, shall we say, where they're signaling to get certain kind of attention uh, to all comers or at least to the largest and most alpha 
of the group. And it's like they're they're signaling. Yeah, they're signaling. So I would I would say that those sexual signals are are quite interesting and quite prevalent in our society right now, as opposed to what they used to be. And I'm not saying that it's it's worse. In fact, I like it because it gives me a clear line of delineation. What do you have to say about that? A clear line of delineation gives at least a man like me plenty of lee room to choose and to yeah. not be fooled. I, it surprises me how many men are fooled by the stance that these uh, these young 304s, or even some of the old 304s throw out there where they want their cake and they want to eat it too, which of course they would, anybody would, but uh, if you're savvy to the game, none of that really matters because you, you know how to play the game. Well, I think like for the problem with a lot of these guys is, is that they go in with the, with the wrong mindset. Now, one, yes, I think that one, they don't necessarily understand the mindset of a 304. Mm -hmm. For some reason, they think that as soon as a woman, any woman that gives them attention, that she's interested in him. But the, they don't understand what the interest really is. They don't understand where the interest stems from and what's causing the interest. Okay, so they are misreading the actual interest in itself. So by misreading that interest and the way that they approach it is they, they approach it as if they were approaching, you know, a woman that would, could be potentially wifey. And they are not playing by the rules that the 304s are playing by. Mm -hmm. And it's not like the 304. See, women don't want to have to tell men how to play the game. They just want men to know how to play the game. So with that being said, if the guy is playing the game incorrectly, she's not going to tell him to stop playing it wrong. She's going to continue to play the game because that takes away the fun from the game. Yeah. So now that's a very good point. And I, I completely understand it. I know that guys in our space get really hung up on this. I think there's a couple of reasons why. If you can't play in that top 10% with that, uh, with those girls, with that type of attraction, there's a little bit of bitterness that comes along with it. We know for a fact, just based on, you know, modern statistics gathering through the census that most men are deemed unattractive by most women and average is not good enough, but average for men is quite good enough. And yet you look at some of the 304s, they're quite attractive. And for men, they're, most men are like, like a, a man that is dying of thirst in the desert and to see a glimpse of that beautiful moisture laden drink of water that just cold and there is some condensation on the outside just starting to drip down the side of the glass like this glass right here glenn where it's just it's oh my god it's staring back at me even though it was just a furtive glance it's staring at me it's something i desire so much my body must have it and then when you it's right within your grasp and then oh not now oh it's very frustrating it's maddening you feel like you're gonna die right even more so, you get mad when you see people squander it. Mm. Just pour you're starving, out, right? They just see they just pouring the water out. It's just squirting everywhere. They're just they yep. have so they have such a surplus of this water that you are in need of. But you and have to pay extra. Exactly, you, you have to extra. exactly. And you're wondering why can't they just be charitable, right? <laughs> there is no such thing as There's charity no such in this thing. game. And I think here's the problem with a lot of the guys. Again, it's the approach that they go to the 304s. They try to turn them into something that they have no intentions in being. Oh, interesting. For one, right? They try to make a hoe a housewife when the hoe is not wanting to be a housewife for you. Because a woman, even a 304, has no problem changing her approach for the right man. Now, if you're the right man, you can make one, you can make the most church girl the one that sings in choir be the most dirtiest slut or you could also turn the most dirtiest slut into the most conservative woman if she chooses to go after you yeah, See, women it's, it's women will mirror that. your who you are they're attracted to you they will align themselves to compliment you yes so almost like that. the universe has designed it in such a way correct <laughs> and they're just these guys are mad that they're not the guy after all the time they invest in her, right? That they're not the guy that could convince her enough to surrender her current game plan and adapt to his. So I agree with you completely. Now, what do you think about this statement? A lot of guys come out in our space 
three or fours are, are the worst. They just absolutely denigrate these gals. But on the other hand, I think we're going to see a rise of the three or fours. And we're in that process right now. It is, it is on the rise actually because of a couple of factors, but those very same guys that are so thirsty and don't get to enjoy any of the fruits of their labors, so to speak, they're the very first ones that will jump into the chats and just denigrate these women, even if they don't know anything about them, but maybe they're just dressed a little certain way or they even speak like a, a 304 and, uh, you know, are proud of their body count, let's say. Or they're, they're they, they, they feel entitled. They, they, they speak about their entitlement. Yeah. Their and then and then they will immediately sign up for their OnlyFans and promote the rise of the 304. There is so many average girls with an OnlyFans account right now. I love OnlyFans girls. I absolutely do. I have no issue with OnlyFans girls. I'm not married to any of them. None of them are my girlfriends. But you see, that's that's, that's a whole you, just, you just hit a point there. You just made the point. See, these yeah. guys want to wipe them up. Ah, why would they want to do that, Glenn? Because that's what they desire. They are so attracted and they desire them. And the, the issue that they have is an internal struggle because one, the behavior that these 304s have are signals or red flags for guys to this. She is a bad person to invest in. Okay. So procreation, right? She may not be faithful to you because you already know how she behaves and you risk potentially being cucked and that makes her a bad investment for a long-term relationship but they know that they see that they feel that but they can't contain the fact that they want her mm. and their want is come so overbearing that they want to change her i could change her just like how women think i could fix him guys think they could change her and they invest so much into her and when it doesn't happen when she doesn't change because you have to be the person that she changes for on her own not you influencing her to change that when it doesn't happen you feel like you've been taken advantage of almost like they love her for something she can never be absolutely you said it perfectly mm. where did we heard that before roll to Monsi. Um, uh, yeah, someone, <laughs> somebody with the RT. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's fantastic. And you know, I, I, when I say that I, three or fours make the world go around some of the nicest step out of your way. People that I've ever known are high body count three or fours. Now, why would they be like that? After you listen to all this, you would think they're next to the devil and maybe they are, but in my experience, it hasn't been the case. But then again, I have a little more social acuity than someone that's just uh, because it doesn't matter to me at all whether, you know, I drill them down. It's it's of course, it's always on the table, but it's not my priority ever. I can explain it. I can explain it because it's the mindset and yeah. it's coming from if you're if you are a beta male. OK, you see the world from a very different perspective and lens than guys that are turned on or switched on. Because they're guys, well, guys, we should all be turned on when we see 304s. Um, but switched on alpha guys, they understand, they see it differently. They see 304s for what they are. And they respect them for what they are. They don't see them for what they could be or a fantasy of them, uh -huh. what they could potentially be. They see them for how they are. Yeah. And they respect that. And they respect their position. And they know not to try to adjust sway them to be anything else other than what they are that's what the alpha guys is that's the turn the switch yeah. on guys now the betas see them as what the fantasy what they could be it's that that's the idealistic you know dream that they're gonna rescue her from yeah. the streets of pimping and that they're gonna save her and it's that fantasy that they have that when that doesn't become a reality it, it kills them you know, it crushes them. They get, they get bitter. They get nihilistic. They become blackpilled yeah. because they have this one. It's a covert contract, Ryan Stone, um, yeah. that they think they're going to be able to change her. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I think you're absolutely right with that. And that's a big problem with even even within our community, a uh, failure to recognize that. And, uh, you know, it, it goes right down to what we call as our uh, existential fear of, you know, 
having children with one of these women that truly are not our own and being cucked, so to speak, or being a cuckold for our resources and then be having those resources yanked away from us when we have failed to perform uh, our burden of performance. Um, do you know why you do so good with 304s? Mm. Because you treat them as humans. Yeah. You don't, uh, you don't, you don't, you, one, you don't put them on a pedestal for one. You treat them as people, as normal people. I like their, per, their, their profession is not, or what they do on the side has nothing to do with who they are. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I mean, it does have something to do with who they are, but as human beings, I understand how they, they operate as a, as a woman. And I can be in the moment and have an amazing time and have them around me. And I can have my wife around them and all of that stuff. And we're chopping it up and it even hits innuendo and all that sort of thing. Am I investing in them? Not really, but I, as a human, I'm giving them, uh, am I giving them attention? Why wouldn't I give them some amount of attention as long as it doesn't cost? It, I'm getting something in return. I'm learning gain or one you can use. And I hate to use the term use because this is an even exchange. Once you have some game and you can socially interact, so let's just say with the 304s of the world, it is, a, it is an exchange of energies that you're actually both benefiting from. Even if you're not getting a date, you're not doing those things. If you're having a conversation and you're chopping it up and you're not necessarily having a bait, but you're having a good time, even if it's five minutes, that there's nothing wrong with that. You're learning something away from that. And I think a lot of guys get confused, especially in our space when they look at guys like us and we go to Vegas and uh, we're chopping it up with the, the 304s. Uh, there has been those that would say, you guys are just, you're full of it. You're full of your crap because look you're at you. You're simping. You're simping, simping for simp them. All. We oh know how God. to finesse and we know how to socialize to meet our own ends. In a way, it's our own mental point of origin. We're getting serviced by this. This is a service. We're being serviced. I mean, not physically, specifically, but we're being serviced in a certain way. You're muted, Glenn. Yeah, they're then, keeping us sharp. You know, yeah, they're keeping us sharp. like, it's like, it's like, these are just practice reps. Because one, we're not, in full pursuit so we're not playing we're not we're not going hard a game Practice we're right. just we're just we're just going through the motions we're we're yeah. parroting we're just you know yeah just going through the flow trying out this tactic okay yeah. cool and we're just playing we're just it's practice it's like this and we're it's, baiting it's, the trot line we're pulling the hook yeah. up a little bait on throw it back in the water see what uh see what's a biting on all that stuff right and the, the difference is also is like how i guarantee you when when, when you're around 304s and you're probably like me the first you don't ever really pay like comment on them and their looks, what they're wearing, their beauty, nothing. You just you, you just treat them as if they were in a nun outfit. You don't you don't yeah. really you, you let them initiate that conversation with you. You as a man are not initiating it because <laughs> they're so used to guys yeah. initiating it that when they don't hear it from you, they can get relaxed. So yeah, like, oh. see, that's a big, big deal. That's super advanced um, social interaction, though, because you know this and you're going to use a different dominant presence, a masculine presence. And you're not going to go over there and say, you're so beautiful. And I love your hair. Oh, where did you get, you know, what is this? And you're not going to be like that. You're no. going to wait. You're going to you're going to you're going to set. It's almost like 4D chess because you're going to set those those little traps. They're not traps, but you're going to set certain um, scenarios up. OK, so that she will at least set herself up for some kind of innuendo that you can have deniable plausibility as if you didn't give a shit. And it's all about her dirty little mind. This is one of the most effective techniques you can use throughout conversation. And if you get good at it, your wit is really good. Now, all of a sudden, she's actually touching you with Kino, not yep. you the other way around, which that's you're not, all you're the not around it. hot, hot girls and being able. No, you can be genuine. See, by doing that. And then, oh, he played the game with me, tricked me, made me say something about banana gobbling. Damn it, you know, yep. whatever it is, right? And then it's a chuckle, and, and you learn something from that, and you can practice those skills. And if you go over and you're a little awkward, best thing to do is laugh it off and go somewhere else and then come back later when it's all died down and and not try to recover it so hard unless you have solid, solid finesse uh, game. Yep. You have something like an even hotter girl on your side that you can get forgiven for a lot of awkwardness when that. Oh yeah. So let me explain something like being in the industry, will. like being in the industry that I'm in, right? Yeah. I'm around some very beautiful women. I mean, some of the most beautiful women are working my industry as an actor. 
and I and there's I've been on sets where they've been very, very risque, damn near next to nothing clothing. Sometimes not nothing clothing, mm -hmm. you know, and it's being able to. Like, I, I guess it's easier for me being in these settings on the regular. I don't get googly eyes and you know, um, pant like like a, like a horn dog. Yeah, it's it's boobs or boobs. Yeah. Some boobs are small, some boobs are large. Yeah. Some boobs are bigger than you know. It's just some butts are rounder, some butts are smaller. Like it's it's nothing. I have to I have to constantly be in a professional mindset. So when I'm around these girls, it's nothing new to me. It's just cool. I don't and, and I think it's because of that. Because I'm able to do that when I'm approaching them or talking to them, it has nothing to do with sexuality. It has nothing to do with trying to game them or trying to, you know, flirt with them. They're flirting with me before I even acknowledge their flirt. You know, it's like they have to press that flirt with me to get me engaged with them in that manner first. Mm -hmm. I don't lead with it. And a lot of guys tend to lead with it. And that's where they set up to fail. Yeah, I've been with you in some movie premieres, but you you also have social acuity, so it makes it easier for you Sorry. to interact in that. But most people have to actually see that in operation to even fathom what you're talking about, um, to even get there. I think that service industry people kind of understand that. You know, service Sorry. industry people kind of pick up on that too. But um, yeah, that's something that's really hard to explain uh, to people because most, most people just have trouble even initiating conversations, much less being at an event and being social with people, which that's a whole nother thing. Three fours are great to have at events because it's an easy way to network. Uh, and they're good friends. However, you have to be cognizant of the social event because there are certain social events you wouldn't wear our cuts to, <laughs> you know, there are events where elegance and class is an absolute must. And you need to be aware of this as you move and you develop your moves in and out of these uh, events and in life you have to be aware of timing place setting and uh you know and even in the most conservative places you will find that under all the nice conservative dressings there's lots of 304s out there oh absolutely absolutely and oh, you, you know, know what? at this point i want to ask you a couple questions here we go we're gonna we're gonna do the three reasons you're going to give three reasons. I'll give three reasons. Three reasons why 304s have benefited our society. Here we go. I'll, I'll do the first one. Now, 304s are good for betas. Yes. Why? If you can't get a woman to fall in love with you or be attracted to you on your own, and you want to get good with women, a transaction from a beta to a 304 helps them get reps, gives them the experience and how to interact with a woman properly. If you're a virgin and you are not getting sex and you want to have sex with a woman, a 304 can facilitate that for you. Okay. That's one good reason. Now people are like, well, wait a minute. You're saying you're, 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 you're saying it's okay to go pay for it. If you're not getting any, and you really want some, you don't have to be sexless. A 304 is that other option that you could utilize to get better in that area. I won't disagree with that because I've been in the industry where men are often gone from home for weeks at a time. A lot of those guys, though, develop, uh, they don't have the social skills again. And so they use that as a crutch and it ends up becoming uh, somewhat of a sedation because it's so easy to do the transaction and that can actually really limit you. Once you get your reps in, you understand how a woman's body works and how they, you could actually use that as a tool to benefit yourself. But the risk with that, it's too fucking easy. Yeah. You, get, it's, now, it's, you yeah, don't have to do very anything high risk that way. Yeah. Yeah. But you're yeah. right. And in many cases that serves very, very well. Have you ever heard, you know, the stories, of the old Roman army and all of them, they took, an entire basically they'd have their battalions or or they'd roll out but they would take their three or fours with them they were just like the first female mm -hmm. people in the military like they, yeah. they didn't go to battle but Very they bad. did serve, have a service on the field sure of course they did you know and it was more than just nursing service uh, and it was uh it, it wasn't viewed quite the same as it would it would be today but anybody that's been in the military and you know has been in several ports uh there's entire industries built around uh, that uh, primal desire that men, especially beta men, would need 
And, you know, the alphas seem to have no trouble with that. It's just that there's going to be a different price to pay if you don't have the skills or you haven't developed the skills. Yep, that's definitely a reason. I'll, I'll throw a reason out there for you why they're so good. Why they're so good out there is they give uh, women that you might want to um, actually wife up and lock down a measuring stick. A measuring stick which with which, you know, there's that male existential fear, that Madonna whore complex, where at least loosely, you know, you're afraid you can't, uh, you know, verify uh, paternage, you know, uh, with your offspring. So there's a measuring stick there that's very good. She can certainly associate with what drives that woman better than you can, but it also gives her a lot of reasons to want to lock down on a really high value man and claim it as, as her own. And they will get quite protective and do a lot of mate guarding around the three fours, which is a very good thing because they maintain a certain level of competition anxiety that if used properly, which not a lot of guys do, you really need to listen to the guys that know about this because a lot of guys don't. It's very sensational. It's really ultimatum driven. And that's not what it is at all. It's about having high level of social acuity and the ability to, to make it known without making it known that you're a very desirable man and 304s fit this so well that it kind of actually secures your place with your main girl. You Absolutely. Know. I hope I made some sense there because I kind of... No, you did. And, and I'll just kind of recap. It's like, if you find yourself interested in a woman and a woman really wants to get with you, right? And she wants you to wife her up. And you're thinking about it. Well, one, you have to ask yourself, why do I want to wife her up? Why do I want to give up the freedom of not being committed and being able to sleep with 304s for her, right? And what you're ch now looking at is like, well, the 304 is giving me this type of sex. And I like this type of sex. Okay. Now, is she going to give me this type of sex? Now, that, that's, that level of enjoyment that you receive from the 304 sexually is now the standard bearer to a degree to your potential mate. If she has very vanilla sex, if she's, if she's a prude, if she's not open sexually in that area for you, if she's not willing to be, then you're not going to be as inclined to marry her because you know that you're going to have this desire for this. So yeah. what women have to do now is I have to compete. I have to be as good sexually for him as they are. Yeah. I That's what drives women. You know how guys always want their wife to be their little whore? Yep. Well, where do the women understand that from? Is that they know that men love the sexual exploitations with those whores and women in order to compete with them, they have to become that whore in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So three or fours take that shortcut, don't they? And I think, they do. That, you know, I have developed a hypothesis that as a top, let's say you're a top G it is absolutely required that three or fours are around in order to establish that you have to have that around. And it actually makes the, the, the relationships that you choose to keep into the long term. It, it kind of solidifies it because of that competition anxiety that's intrinsic when there's a bunch of three or fours around. And also if they're young and fertile, it will raise your testosterone and you will be fulfilling your burden of performance as a top G, so to speak, you know, uh, having those young, beautiful three or fours around for sure. Now there's good girls too. Don't discount them, but you're going to find the three or fours in many, many more social environments because that's where they essentially apply their trades, you know, and because, one thing about three or fours is attention is the coin of the realm. It is for all women, but it is especially so because, you know, it's a fickle thing. It's fleeting that attention and that novelty. It becomes, you know, a sedation for them as well. And it's really kind of sad because once they get past the wall and they hit that epiphany, you can read it in them as they've missed out on the fulfillment for childbearing and, and family and security and all those things. Absolutely. And here's another thing that reason why three or fours are good. All right. And I think there's a rapper named Little Wayne that said this. He tells a girl, like, whatever you won't do, <laughs> somebody else will. Yep. And that is that other challenge. Again, your commitment, you as the alpha guy, you as a, a top tier guy, you as the man, period, are the gatekeeper to a relationship. Now, 
in order for a woman to get you to commit, she has to be the woman that you want. So it, she has to fulfill that Madonna whore complex for you. She has to be your dirty little whore behind closed doors, but that elegant, classy woman in public. Yep. And when a woman can't fulfill that need, then you know you could stay still withholding the relationship until you find a woman that meets that satisfaction for you. Yeah. So it really kind of helps women. Actually, 304s keep women honest. Mm -hmm. In a way, 304s keep women honest. Yep. And that's why women tend to hate and they slut shame 304s more than men do. Although... Mm -hmm. On certain shows, you may actually hear a whole lot more men slut shaming 304s. Mm -hmm. But in actuality, it's actually women who actually slut shame 304s overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it kind of reminds me have you ever seen that meme where there's a, a beautiful, beautiful woman with a sandwich and a picture like on Facebook and she's mm -hmm. looking back? And the meme really strikes home because it speaks a lot of truth. And, and it said, never let your man leave home hungry or horny. Somewhere out there is a whore with a sandwich. sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't that some kind of amazing uh, meme that spoke truth and harsh truth. And uh, that's kind of goes to like, whatever you won't do, another girl will. Right. Right. Very interesting. Yeah. So definitely because of that, we need three or four. Mm -hmm. They serve a place. They serve a role. A Here's another home. thing. Um, Where would we be without 304s? I mean, side chicks. We gotta have some side we chicks. We wouldn't have any. We wouldn't have. We Here's the thing. If if we didn't have 304s, men would have the even a much more harder time <laughs> getting women to be open to them sexually. Mm. Mm -hmm. See, it, because we value women's sexuality, when especially when it comes to mating, right? In, 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 in uh, relationship investment, we value that sexuality so much that a woman could have the most ridiculous requirement list for you to meet. And you would do that because you want to have access to sex, mm -hmm. right? But with 304s, it actually requires women to actually play at a fair level. Because in order to keep your interest, she has to give you something. Mm -hmm. And if she doesn't give you something, you're going to lose interest and you're going to go where you can get it, which is the 304s. Again, the 304s are, have been in a, a, a 304s have been a cornerstone in our sexual mating strategy from the beginning of time. Yep, I think you're absolutely right with that. Now, um, unfortunate for them, though, is they're still human women and they still have a lot of, of beauty about being human women and there's a lot to like about them but there's also a like that strikes our uh, existential fears you know mm -hmm. about infidelity you know we talk a lot about body count here and what that represents the ability to bond all those sorts of things that we like to invest in for a long-term relationship uh, is under threat by 304s or at least so we perceive it as such you know um could you wife a a, a hoe could you make a hoe a housewife? Well, yes, you absolutely could. But sure. I like to make an analogy like this. It's just like wifing a celebrity because both of them are require attention, whether the sexual attention is intimate and established by miles of penis run through them, or if it's just kind of, of thousands of eyeballs on them as in famous, the outcome is relatively the same because all that fawning, you know, you could, and the analogy I like to make is you could make her the housewife. It'd be like you wanting to climb Mount Everest. You know, you just have to realize if you're going to do this, you, you're going to need to invest in equipment. You're going to need to invest in training. It might be months. It might be years. You're going to have to hire a Sherpa. You're going to have to hire a guide. You're going to have to have emergency plans. You're going to have to have first aid kits. You're going to have to have oxygen because you're going to get the oxygen sucked out of you at some point during that climb. And that's just to get to base camp. And once you get to base camp, you're going to start that journey up and there's going to be some weather and there's going to be some slides, right? There's going to be some un unexpected turns and twists on your way to the summit to get to that marriage. And then when you get there, there's the climb back down. So you could do it, but you could say, yes, I did it. And was it worth it? Well, 
the reason you may do it is because it's there and that's an accomplishment. Hooray for you. Or you could just go out your backyard to that wonderful, beautiful hill with the oak tree on it. You could climb up there and you could sit down and have a picnic and just enjoy the beauty of nature. So you got to know what you're getting into if you're going to do it. Could you turn her into a housewife? You could, you know, just like you could turn a celebrity woman into a housewife. It could be done, but just by the very nature of being that famous, even it start, we're starting to even see it with internet famous. Yeah. Almost counts them from the ability to have a fulfilling long-term relationship. And when I say fulfilling, they don't last very long. We're seeing a lot of evidence of this. It, and it's almost as if one party could be famous. The other party really shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. But we see his team to t- see them pair up. And it, it seems to not work so well when the woman has that much fame because it just doubles her options. There's so many men that fawn over them and idolize them and fantasize. And uh, in, in a way, they may not be a 304, but it accomplishes the same thing. And I guess for some women, that's perfectly fine. And I'm happy that we have 304s because it definitely sets the bar out there for which we can gauge all of the relationships for sure and gives us plenty of practice. Yeah, I'm going to tee off of what you said. Um, in order, before you climb the mountain, all right, you, you determine you're going to climb this mountain. Yeah, I practice. One, you have to know that you have enough surplus of time mm-hmm. to invest to climb that mountain. That the time that you invest to climb that mountain, you're not going to be set back if it doesn't work out. So your investment is you have this surplus, okay? And you could throw this extra that you have, right. and it's not going to take away from anything that you have now. Right. It's it's extra. It's, you know, I have an abundance of this. So if you're going to invest in a 304 to make her a wife, everything you're going to be investing, whether it's your time, your resources, right? Um, and time is the one most valuable thing that you have. You know, the, anything that you invest into her to make her that housewife, you have to be okay with losing at the same time. It ha- cannot be caused, it can't cause you such a, uh, a, can't be so detrimental if it doesn't work out because at that point, then it, the investment would not be worth it to you. The only reason why it could be worth it to you is that if whatever you invest, you could lose and it could be fine. It doesn't yeah. bother you. It just water off a duck's back. Yeah. But see, what a lot of problem is, is the guys that actually invest in these 304s to try to turn them into housewives yeah. do not have enough fail safe so that if it fails, that they could walk away and be okay. Yeah. And see, that's the difference. That's the huge difference. When you think about doing it, you ask, how much is it going to cost me to invest in this mentally? Yeah. Can I live with losing that much investment? That's no? True. Okay. I probably should not invest in this at this time. I'm not in the position to handle that. Yeah, but here's what most guys do, Glenn. They do it like as uh, they do a sales job on themselves. Some people do this with uh, goods and services and objects. It's like it's like that wonderful new object or electronic piece, uh, a piece that you like comes on sale, right? And it's a once in a lifetime. It's a once in a lifetime sell. If I don't go all in on this, I'll never get the opportunity again. Guys convince themselves of that bullshit, you know, and that's actually how people, you know, smart salespeople gain sales like that. They tap into that emotion of where this is the deal will never come around for you again. If you don't buy it now, inflation is too great. There's too much more. This is a one of a kind piece, not knowing that in the background, they just put a little extra you know, steering foot in there to sw- to swell up the seals so that it's nice and tight and doesn't squeak anymore, you know, things like that. And then you have to buy right now. And oh my God, it's a flaming train wreck, you know, and you can't tell them any other difference because they've invested so emotionally. And it's a tragic thing that happens because men do invest in women, uh, let's say 304s and love them right out the get go for what they can never be or return to them. And in a way, that's kind of not fair to them either. Actually, I was going to say that. They don't even, guys blame them for being what they cannot be. Yeah. But never did they say they, one, desire to be that for them or said that they could be that for them. No. It's, and it's, it's entirely on the guy. Yeah. And the other problem, here's the thing why women don't like them either, is because when a guy gets 
feels like he's been hurt or damaged or burned from a 304 or, or basically having a covert contract with a 304 and it's not being fulfilled. Now that guy tends to have really bad trust issues with all women. And he looks at rush. exactly. He looks at the non 304s as 304s. He can't tell the difference on who's who. When the and reality the, is he never could to begin with. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a problem. And that's a problem, you know. It is. It is. But uh, you know, and but you know, on the uh, our wonderful little 304s, they can't see it on the other side either because they only have eyes for that top guy and they think he's just around the corner, you know. And it, everything yep. needs to be fair, and nothing is fair in life, and nobody will rescue, and you are saddled with these strategies that were and tactics that were passed down in our firmware uh, via evolution, the most successful and strongest ones are passed down. And that's why it is the way it is today. Uh, and, and it's really, almost like the 304s live in the fantasy of the wife store. <laughs> yeah, of course. They just keep on going up the levels and levels and levels thinking that they're going to find that, that guy. But yeah. when they realize that there's, they can't go back down. Yep. And there's nothing up there. They're stuck. They do live in that fantasy. But you know what? A lot of guys that are in that kind of beta realm, shall we say, the lower 80 percent, they're living in a fantasy too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I can't tell you how many guys I hear. And I got to be careful how I say this because this will potentially offend people or embarrass people. But there are so many guys out there right now that want to tell other guys and even sell them techniques and, and tricks and tips about, yeah, man, you can have your main chick and you can have a harem too. And you could do all these threesomes. And, and while it's all true, it's probably not likely for most men because they just don't have that social ability. And without 304s, it's never going to happen. If you don't have the acceptance of that side chick energy in your life because the body count's too high and the, they're worthless, you're only going to have the fantasy. You're never going to live part of that reality. If it's almost they want. have the Cinderella. And yet that, seems, that seems so popular today, Glenn. Like, yeah, I'm going to give me a main chick and I'm going to get two other chicks. Yes, that is a drive. Men want that. That just speaks to the base instinct oh, yeah. of as many mates as you can acquire as the bull alpha you must do. This is but the they're program. not the bull alpha to begin with. That's doesn't the problem. matter. You still think that way. You're like the little chihuahua. Remember my little war dog, Wilbur? Oh, I love Wilbur. Wilbur's fantastic, but Wilbur thinks he's the fucking gorilla. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, he would die. <laughs> I mean, he, he would die because he thinks he's the gorilla war dog, and he's just not. You know? No, and right. that's very unfortunate. Although he's got just this much, he knows his head's little, and he knows he can die just a little bit, but he still wants it, you know? It's almost, he, the, here's the other thing, though, too. Besides the wanting the multiple women dream, they also look at 304s in the Cinderella view. Mm. I am I'm this stuck. guy. I am I'm I I'm I'm above status maybe economically than her or so they appear. They think rescuer. They I'm going to rescue the Cinderella. I'm going to make her my princess. Captain Savaho. Rags to riches. Right. Captain Savaho. I'm going to take I'm going to make her a, I'm going to make an honest woman out of her. Oh, you hear that all the time, don't you? Oh, yeah. It's especially in the church, fantasy, isn't it? It always oh, is a church, fantasy. especially. It is a oh, fantasy. Wait, she was dishonest before. What does that mean? And she why why was she dishonest? All women are dishonest in some ways. Exactly. All people are. Exactly. What, what does and, that mean? And it's like it's almost like it's almost really narcissistic when you think about it. I'm so good of a man, self-serving that I could just. I could convert this woman to be the perfect little housewife. I will save. Watch, watch this. Watch anyway, me. That's unrealistic expectations it's, set it's from the ridiculous. beginning. Ridiculous. It's it's an inflated ego. Damaging. Yeah. It's damn exactly. And the problem with it is, is like you're hurting not only you, but you're also hurting her. Yeah. Because see, the thing about as much as we talk bad about three hundred fours, three hundred fours have feelings too, you guys. Of course, and they're, men they're humans really too. A lot. I think men catch more feelings for three or fours than they do the good girls. Oh, absolutely, because the good girls can never do what the three or fours would, because they're not willing. See, it's like the bad guy and the good guy, right? When you look at the character types, right, the bad guy has to live in this box 
and he could only react or do things within this box in order to maintain the title of a bad guy or good guy. Superman could only do so much and can't go cross. He can't cross lines, but a bad guy doesn't live in a box, right? A bad guy could go as far and do as many different things as he wants. Mm -hmm. He could be as good as he wants. It could be as bad as he wants because he's not contained by certain values or structures that, that he has to do in order to maintain his title. He's a one percenter. Exactly. But good girls, they know they can't cross certain lines without being criticized or without damaging that good girl title. Or risking shame. Or risking that good girl title being questioned. Yeah. So that's why guys tend to love the 304s. They do catch feelings for them very, very quickly. In fact, that disgusts most of them. Because, you know, when we're social, we talk. They do open up. It's amazing. Girls are... They will tell on themselves and they will tell you every secret you need to know to absolutely make a conquest if you want and, and or and or you can make them feel very elevated, mm -hmm. which I actually enjoy because they will never forget you. And I like to leave with that wonder intact rather than leave them frustrated and thinking, you know, but uh, the guys, they, they'll tell you guys catch feelings that fast. It's now flowers. It's chocolates. It's like, holy shit. The clamps have come out. You know, they're seeing a bear trap of this over possessive weirdness that borderlines creepiness. And it's, it's an issue that I think all the three fours actually face. You know what? It's, you know, you remind me of something. So I've never released this, but I did a special interview with the girl that I know who is a 304. She's actually an escort. Okay. And like, um, I know her through another group of friends of mine that we would get together, hang out and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and she came over to our party one time and we're just chit chatting, just catching up and she's French. So I knew her cause she came, she was a model that came from France and we all just kind of like network through the same community of people. Yeah. And, you know, she was very, you know, open with her, what she does on the side. She models and she escorts. No problem. That she's straight up mm -hmm. front with it. And me and her were having an interview. We recorded this too. It wasn't in a studio. We did it off my phone. And we're just, we're, we're talking and we're recording this whole conversation. And once I clean up the audio, I'll, I probably might have to release it. But mm -hmm. she was giving some gold nuggets, nuggets of wisdom from a 304's perspective, you know, from that worldview. And it was done in a way that, I presented the questions in a way that was non-judgmental. Mm -hmm. It was at a, at a pure curiosity and explaining, like asking her questions about love. How could she see love now? How does it affect her? What does she find attractive? And the things it was mind blowing. The things that she was saying was that the things that basically the guys that were trying to lead in with were not the things that they found attractive. Right. They actually were, they were more in, they were deeper than that. It wasn't, wasn't your money. It wasn't their, their status. It was conversation. It was, you know, um, are you able to maintain a conversation and excite me through communication? Mm -hmm. it, it was, it was past all the material and flashy things. They were deep. It was, it was really interesting to and see that. Like, with. Yeah. 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 Everything else is boring. They want to be played with and stimulated. Yeah. But this is really fundamental to all women and attraction to all women and don't get me wrong i mean if you if you really want to lock a good woman down you're still gonna have to play these same games you're still gonna have to get social cutie you're still going to have to be the man other women men want to be another women desire because it's super important that you learn those skills and they're not going to come quickly you're going to have to put some reps in over time and thank god there are three or fours that you can get some of those reps in with doesn't mean you have to be dumb definitely wrap up don't do the Brittany Renner thing where there's a honey trap because a lot of these gals deep down, they're seeking that fulfillment and they are definitely, they're definitely bound strongly to uh, their, their timing, their fertility window. Uh, ovulatory shift is a factor. Baby rabies is coming and they would love to have that fulfillment that they have seen in other women because there's no better shining example for a woman than when she's in her late forties or fifties with, her family around her grandchildren and she's not really buying into the divorce porn or she may not even be an extreme conservative woman but she has all this respect of family and friends that's rather classy and 
she feels really good about herself and and you can handle a lot when that's out there and you're not alone women don't do well alone they have a strong communitarian uh bent that's built in and so they need community and part of that community is having family you know so there is a there's a there's a tough road for the for the 304s when and they, they, they tend to get they, ostracized from their family they do they you know do. That's you know i want to say like one thing though like the best way to approach dealing with the 304 if you're going to engage with the 304 is one check your fantasy at the door mm. okay accept who she is and what she is but treat her with respect treat her with respect as you would any other human being when you go into it that way you know you're acknowledging who she is you're not acknowledging what she is and you now you don't have any expectations of her other than what you know what she is and who she is and in doing that you minimize your mistakes of eventually trying to convert her or assume that she could be something she never will be and that's the thing that's where the main problem is don't you do you think the main problem with guys when it comes to 304s is thinking that they could be something that they never could be yeah it's a big part of it and i will caution the guys on this because most of the guys that just heard that what you just said they don't get it yeah when you tell them to acknowledge what they are they're gonna lose that clutch between their brain and their mouth and they're gonna sit there and say well you're a 304 i know exactly what you're now i've acknowledged it guys this is never spoken of no you never, you never even call them in their out. face you never point out there other if if you if you want to there are legitimate reasons you might actually hire escorts for some social event not to bang everybody but to be part of the ambiance things mm -hmm. like that you don't call them out for what they are you're hoping they're a good 304 and that they're beautiful and they know how to socially interact and they're very skilled at their game one thing about those gals that are on that borderline of being a working girl they understand femininity and how to project it you see and that's super important in social environments eh? because it's very attractive and it shows power for the men that have arranged those sort of things and they're understanding socially on how men and women work and that's that's really important but those men they never sit there and point it out to their faces and they're very discreet when they're talking socially or publicly about pointing it out they don't shame or judge publicly and even privately they'll hold those res reservations for themselves and even the most alpha guys they're not going to confront them and uh make sport of it where all the beta males are clapping that they did that to shame them. No, you know what they do? They just go with her best friend. Yeah. And stop. And also it's you actually know, they, very admirable. It. Move. Yeah. It's very admirable because of the alpha. The alpha knows that he could shame her, but he chooses not to. Why? Because it ruins the relationship. And not just the relationship between that individual and her. But it disrupts the force. You now ex you, it disrupts you, the force. I like that. <laughs> you expose the game. It's yeah. like, you know, the like Rolo says, girls want to you to know, know how to play the game, and yeah. they don't want to be told that they're playing the game. Right. Right. When you do that, when you call them out of what they are, now the game is exposed. Now everybody knows the game, and yep. they don't want to know the game. You ruin again, like you disrupt the force. The force is you know fucked up now. Yep. Instead of understanding, like as you said, you the okay, they do that. It's like chess. You make yeah. this move. I do this. I make this move. Right. Same with jujitsu. I remember having a very long conversation with my jujitsu instructor, Hoist Gracie, and it was, you know, I always wanted to get better. He says, but here's the thing: you do this, I do that. You do that, I do this, and and really, I don't need to explain that to them. I just do it. And so when you acknowledge what they are and who they are and, and where they work in this environment, that's enough. You don't have to explain it to anybody else. You just live in it, play in it, and you have your boundaries set. And uh, hats off to the 304s. We're coming up on uh, cucking season. And yes. uh, so there's lots of cucking to be had when we uh, approach the first of the year through the 14th. And we'll probably do a couple of shows on cucking season. So this is our tribute <laughs> to all the 304s. Thank you. We love you. For being you. Absolutely. We honor you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Hey, we got so much more we could talk about this. You know what? I wish Appreciate Phil it. was here because you know he loves them 304s. Of course. God, he loves those 304s. Yes. 
Yes, he does. He has a lot of experience. We'll retouch on this at some point for sure. So you guys, you know what? We will be staying tuned. We got some couple episodes we're going to do soon. And then you guys will be able to see the full Trident in effect. So keep an eye out. Trident effect. The Trident effect. There you go. Until next time, you guys. I'm Glenn Lawrence. I'm RP Thor. Peace. Oh. That was good. Of course it was. We, that we was good. That, I love we that do, conversation. We,